Martini Entertainment. What's up, foos? What's up? Yo, yo. What's happening? Oh, you know, foo, getting ready to party hardy. <laughs> yeah, man, I see that you lowered your ears for this one. <laughs> <laughs> sure did, buddy. Got a little yeah, haircut. I need one myself right after this. But, uh, foos, it's episode 234. Welcome back. Uh, before we get started, find a bunch of cool FooBar Show merch at FooBarShow.com. Find tons of new merch items like totes, travel mugs, magnets, baby onesies, and t-shirts in tons of new colors and styles. Go to our merch page found at FooBarShow.com to check that all out. Next up, click on the link to SoCal Rock Band The Fallen Electric at the bottom of FooBarShow.com for music and merch. Fallen, the Fallen Electric plays The Den's virtual stage on Friday, July 2nd. For $4, you can not only watch The Fallen Electric live, but every other band that has graced their stage. And that's going to be on Friday, July 2nd at 7 p.m. Catch that. Also, Grass Store, everybody. One of the best cannabis delivery services I've ever dealt with, bar none. They service L.A., Orange County, and select parts of the Inland Empire. Go to the... Go to foobarshow.com and click on our grass store banner and first time users get 30% off of their purchase. Lastly, <clears throat> whether you'd like to host your next virtual event or you're ready to go live in person or given the times foos in a socially responsible manner, ALF can help you do it right. They pride themselves in being masters of audio, visual, and lighting solutions. Most recently, Foos, they've become masters of virtual events and meetings, partnering with their clients to produce live events in a socially safe environment. Go to ALFLEI.com to get their contact information. They can be contacted via phone call or email for any questions on how they can help you produce a flawless event. That's ALF Live Events at ALFLEI.com. That's ALFLEI.com. And now, without further ado, Foos, episode 234, here we go. From Filthy Martini Studios in Ontario, California, it's... Listening to the Bar Show. Thanks for hitting subscribe and remember to rate, review, and tell your friends like a champ. You can always get in touch with us and get our merch at foobarshow.com. That's F double O bar show.com and search F double O bar show on YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram. Check us out, drop us a line, and we'll foo it up like a couple of foos. Ain't that right, foos? C, C, foo. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On tap today, we have the normal shit that we typically do, man. We got geeking out. We got the joint report. We got a little bit of sports, music, and foo facts. But before sports. all that, Josh, we yeah we our, our dog's anus is becoming a problem. It's and oh, oh my, so, it's offensive. And uh, oh you know, before uh, he was pretty gassy, and that was just toxic gas filling up the, uh, the the living room. It was chemical warfare. It was chemical warfare. I it was an attack. Uh, I think it was canine against human. Uh -huh. And as much as we tried to battle that with our own methane gas, uh, mm -hmm. we we could not stand with that kind of firepower. So we bought him these. What are they called? No toot. No toot. No toot. Gas uh, and all. It's now gas busters. Ga okay, gas busters. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cross those streams. Uh, oh. Whoa. Oh. Um, yeah, so we got we got that, and so that calmed it down. But there was a there was an effect that happened that was unintentional, and uh, so it's it's kind of a stool softener also, but it takes care of the of the uh, of the gas, right? The toxic gas, like that's no longer an issue. The issue oh, now is his anal going. glands. Oh, the eight, oh that's so worse. apparently because he's not pooping as uh, you know the sol as solid as he used to because of these uh, these supplements, he, he you know usually I guess when 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 you have a, a solid BM if you're a dog, it presses up against the anal glands, thus you know kind of helping empty them out 
you know, after every well, bowel I'm movement. I'm so glad I did not eat this morning. Because oh, okay. because it the, the stool is softer than it should be, it's not pressing up against the anal glands. Thus, the anal glands get full, and then they just start leaking spontaneously throughout the day. And then it gets in his ass fur. And, <laughs> you know, just, just imagine, just imagine this. Fishy Steph's vinegar. Hurl. Steph's gonna hurl. Fishy vinegar is just filling up the room. It's gross, dude. It's, no, it's worse than that. It smells like garbage. <laughs> like wet garbage. Oh. And uh, uh, have you ever dealt with this kind of thing, Josh? Because we need help here. Um, I, I, no. I just figure I'm asking uh, the right I, person. You know, anything dealing with uh, with bowel movements and anuses. No. I, I figure we um, go to the pro here. As a fellow pet parent. From a from a from a, from a personal perspective, I have not dealt with this in my own life. So Damn. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for that. Well, yes, fuck. yes, because no one, human nor dog, should deal with such turmoil and and hardships. But I digress. Uh, secondly, in dogs, uh, I have never, ever, ever dealt with this situation <laughs> without it being due to like medication or or something or like them being puppies when it comes out like that and weird. Um, but. <clears throat> Uh, I mean, I, I mean, I, I've always known that they have those anal glands that they need to be expressed. As my ex, uh, who was a vet tech, would used to tell oh, me. Is that what she was? Uh, she was a vet tech. That yeah, explains she the scrub. Be the one. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm glad. I, got I just that. thought. I just Pay thought attention. she liked wearing scrubs. <laughs> hey, no, man, she don't want no scrubs. Jesus. Uh. <laughs> but no, man, that sounds horrible. And you know what, man? I think. I think Taz is really just trying to get back at you guys for constantly locking him out of his little room. Because mm. uh, that, that... You is mean really the, the big-ass yard that we have for him to run around in? You no, mean that? No, He doesn't want that. He wants to be where you are, Foo. He's a stage five clinger. He yeah, he is. Oh, that, that's what we call dogs. Because <sighs> my dogs are the same, but at least they're little and I can throw them around. <laughs> Ta- well, Taz knows how to Not open like... doors. Yeah. He's a raptor. He's one of those raptors. <laughs> Your dog's just a nuisance. Oh my goodness. Is Ugh. Taz in there now? <laughs> it sure sounds like it. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, it's probably a mess all over that floor. Yeah. It's no, it's just air. That's just what can't it sounds tell like. What's, you can't tell what's Steph's puke or what's Taz's shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's all mixed up together. <laughs> and it's, somehow oh. it has the same ingredients. Mm-hmm. But oh, wow. uh, <laughs> so so we're, we're we're scouring the uh uh, the uh, the web, the web, yeah, the webs, and uh, we we can't figure out what would be a good investment because if we can get this, the the both, you know, the both, you know, the 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 anal gland supplements along with the uh, the 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 gas, the toxic gas controller, I think uh, it'd be a win win. I, I wouldn't even mind spending an extra few bucks if it's just kind of like a like you know like a shampoo and conditioner all in one. Mm-hmm. I, I think it would be beneficial to everybody, even you know even guests. <laughs> Yes. Who I think you, what you guys are just doing is just creating a super cocktail of the worst shits this dog will ever have. Like you are you are effectively affecting the chemistry of this dog's stomach. Ugh. It's going to get a whole lot worse before it gets listen, any better. Listen, listen sir, I would argue that the chemistry was already fucked with <laughs> before we even try to do anything. Well, because you got a broken dog. I'm sorry. You just you just, you guys just got a broken dog. He was already a runt. Okay. <laughs> and now he's a stinky runt. Yeah. But uh, a- any listeners who can provide any uh, any kind of information on how we could combat this, uh, it would be most appreciated because uh, we're uh, it's becoming it's becoming more of a problem than we thought because we're like oh finally we solved the problem of the toxic air in our living room and now it's all over i mean good for us that we have like covers over the couches because you know they shed especially pluto our german shepherd uh shetty mcshedderson those covers have another cover on top of them of just hair yeah Yeah. just like they, they just have a Thick layer of hair, jeez. And you know, one of these days, that whenever we throw it in the washer and dryer, it's gonna clog up the freaking washer and dryer. It's like every three weeks it yeah. clogs. I think you know, just by doing it once, we've already we've already voided the warranty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because every time we pull out, you know, the uh, the the lint thing. Yeah, the trapper. For, yeah, the, the lint trapper. It's just there's no lint. It's just fur. 
It's as if we just brushed Pluto a few times. Fur carpet. One one of these days, you're gonna just be, you know, in your li- in your living room, and you're gonna hear what sounds like a cinder block. It's gonna be like yeah. something out of a bad honeymooners special. <laughs> Turns into a horror story. The big block of fur comes to life. Yeah, like no, attacking the killer end tomatoes. Up with me and the foo out in this garage of yours trying to fix this fucking damn thing. Oh, the one snake! Of us is gonna get, one of us is gonna get hurt trying to fix that dryer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, our dogs. If anything, they're they're more of a liability than an asset at this point. I don't even know why we still have them for the fact that you know they're 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 living creatures is the only reason. Were they ever an asset though? Yes. They're cute to look at, uh, man. They are cute. They're nice to pet. Well, one is. One is. Oh, one. Come on, oh, man. They're oh, both oh, pretty cute. Taz's oh, smile is a million dollar smile. You got to admit, man. Mm-hmm. With those small little beady eyes and that little <laughs> those those little uh mm-hmm. exclamate or teal day uh eyebrows that he has. Mm-hmm. They're, 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 we have German <laughs> dogs, okay? So they're they're gonna. That's true. How about Pluto it? when he folds his ear back? Yeah. Ooh, pet me. I like it when he just picks up one ear, and it's just like, Dick, you don't pick up your ears at all. Now you decide just to pick up one because right? you're interested. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but anyway, I digress, man. Uh, this dog is becoming a problem, <laughs> and uh, as if he wasn't already one before. And we need yeah. help. We need. We fucking need help. This is a dire situation. I may not mm-hmm. make it to the end of the year. And um, oh no, foo. Yeah, it's um, it's toxic to us now. It's a bad time. It's a bad and um and Steph refuses to learn how to express the anal glands. I'm on not sticking my finger in my dog's butt. Out of I'm all the things, it's not in their it's not in their butt. Well, yeah, I know. It's, it's just it's slightly. Not pleasant. It's it's not. Pleasant. It's slightly to the. Yeah. It, it is still the interior. You got to kind of like pinch it from the inside and then one, your thumb on the outside. <laughs> and it's like popping a pimple. You like popping pimples. You're you're a woman. <sighs> Oh, dude, that's... Uh, excuse me? It's up sexist? Your, that's another thing I don't It's think. up your... It's, it's in your wheelhouse, lady. <laughs> you know, dudes it's, and, you know, non-dudes also like popping pimples. What's got to say about that? All right, well, moving on. Moving I, I don't know if there's on. anything else that you guys wanted to talk about. The one thing I just wanted to... Um, discuss is the party happening tonight your graduation party what oh, was this uh josh 10 years in the making gonna get wrecked do, 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 actually 12 years in the oh, for oh what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my bad my bad yeah my mistake uh so yeah we're looking forward to that i, I assume you're gonna have a lot of friends and family there uh that are all vaccinated yes. so uh, looking- all of them are vaccinated yeah we've already got confirmation from 20 of our vaccinated invitees and mm-hmm. we're assuming two two people will be showing up for every 20 so it's gonna be looking like a nice big party all of our family pretty much except for the food maybe food's coming what it's coming <laughs> sans baby sans baby oh no baby yet but okay i understand i understand no, yeah yeah it's no no vaccines yet but uh we'll see you soon so we get to celebrate father's day with the food oh. hey that's uh all right we that's gotta get, food's uh, day guys food's day, day. Is oh, that, that is perfect that is perfect <laughs> this is all right can we call this the the the, the Foothers Day episode the Foothers the day, Foothers day <laughs> special foods ah oh, i wish i had a drop for that ah oh. Hang on. Let, uh, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Give, give me a second. Yeah, that's fresh as fuck. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> it's just fresh as fuck. I know, Phil, ah. isn't it? <laughs> oh, so fresh, foods. So fresh indeed. Make sure yeah, you man, make sure you party. hydrate. Yes. Oh, oh, I, I'm already getting warned by my brother that I will be shit faced. Not puked shit faced, but shit faced nonetheless. Oh, I'll be the judge of that, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh man. speaking of, speaking of feeling weird, um, guess <laughs> guess who had mushrooms yesterday? Steph? No, me. Oh. Yeah. Oh, what? Yeah, I uh I, so uh, while I was watching Cruella because I saw Cruella yesterday, uh I uh, yeah, dude, it was fucking sick. And then, um, and, you know, the best part is that right after Cruella, I put on the first episode of Loki again. And you know that scene? You know, the, the, the most intense the high got when you start kind of seeing 
the you know the the uh, the, the quintessential mushroom experience where things start looking kind of paisley and kaleidoscopy. In yep. the uh, in the scene where Loki is being shown the actual out the the interior of the uh, the what is it the AT what is it the, the TVA 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 the TVA oh. and, and like the structures and everything just looks so fucking trippy dude it was fucking amazing and you know I was pretty proud of myself I didn't overdo the dosage where I just started feeling like an existential crisis happening I, I was actually yeah. enjoying my experience and it lasted for like six hours. So, Dang, Dan, that sounds like a nice high, though. You know what? I had a personal pizza before I had the shrooms, so I think that kind of balanced. It didn't hit me all like a like a like a ton of bricks. So, um, uh, oh, but speaking of personal pizza, I'm, I'm sorry, going into tangents, but I'm very excited about this. I don't know if I've discussed this on the on the podcast before, but uh, I, I know everybody knows that I'm on keto and have been. But oh, you're on keto. Shut up. I have dis- <laughs> Steph and I have uh, have I started eating pasta again, Josh. No. But it's not pasta made out of uh, made out of like wheat or flour. It's made out of chickpeas. And oh yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, and it's it's called Banza from, and we get it at Target. And dude, it is one of it. it it's probably better than real pasta. Like it tastes legit. The mac and cheese is legit. Um, the, they they make all types of pasta, even though they're all you know, all pastas are the same. It's just the shape that you get them in. But they make a pizza crust, too, with, like, cheese already on there, and you just pop it into the oven and put your toppings on there. Bro, what, I, I, you know, I think, um, I think I need to buy stock. Look at how excited he is. <laughs> I need to buy stock in Panza. I mean, yeah. This is the most excited I've seen you talk about. It's legit. Thanks. Dude, I haven't had pasta since, like, November. And now, and now I can't stop eating this, the chickpea pasta. So if, you, if anybody's there considering keto and is thinking, man, I can't do keto because I love myself some pasta, they also make like their own version of rice. It's not real rice, but if you season it just like you would like a Mexican rice thing, um, it's pretty goddamn close. Mm-hmm. So it's like cauliflower rice? No, dude, it's the chickpea stuff. Oh, it's all chickpeas. Yeah, yeah, it's all it's made out of chickpeas. So is it's it? like it's like hard hummus. <laughs> it's high in fiber, you know, high protein. Mm-hmm. No sugar. Since we're on this whole keto keto subject here, um, I actually recently, you know, because I've also been starting dieting too, um, and I've been mixing in some keto aspects of it. I went to a Pollo Loco the other day, and they have a keto menu. That's that's what I get. Um, so instead of rice yeah. and beans, I get I get that that uh, the cauliflower that rice well. and beans. Yeah. I, I tried that the other day. It was actually really fucking good. I was like, what the fuck? I did not know what to expect with that cauliflower rice, but I was like, Holy well, shit. I like how they season it with like that lemon cilantro. Yes. So that's that really, helps. that's really what, what you're tasting. Otherwise it'd be just cauliflower and that's kind of boring. Yeah. yeah. And, um, that's, that definitely helped. I also had the keto burrito and that was really good. You know, I think, like, um, I was, I was one of the people who, um, who sent them an, an Instagram uh, uh, DM, Pollo Loco, because uh, oh, a, few, right. a few months ago they introduced their keto menu, and but it was dirty keto. It was actual real rice. That was the one thing not actually making oh. it keto. And I think uh, me, along with all the other keto people out there, um, uh, complained banded enough. Banded together. Yeah, with our powers combined, <laughs> banded together so that they can actually consider the cauliflower rice which is which is what you're finding in their keto menu now and it's 100 percent keto now which is exciting unless you dress it up with that cilantro dressing that's not necessary uh because it I'm helps sure with the taste but yeah but it's kind but of has sugar in it it's defeating yeah exactly so uh just yeah, I, yeah. just do without that unless you're unless you're having a cheat meal in which case you know treat yourself to a little cilantro dressing because that's bomb mm-hmm. you gotta admit it it's pretty bomb it is it yeah. is, especially when I had it on like the uh, the, the tostadas that they had before. Mm-hmm. They were actually really good there. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, dude, it's awesome that there's places now that have keto menus and keto options because it's, you know, sometimes it like especially for lunches. Like on my lunches, I don't got time to make a full on fucking meal right now. Like mm-hmm. I just need something quick, something light, just to get me through the rest of my damn day. And yeah, yeah. man. No, I'm excited, man. Uh, this is the world I want to live in. So uh, <laughs> a, lot, a lot more places are going keto these days. Well, they're realizing that sugar is has been fattening up this country for so long. If you look at other countries, they're not incorporating as much sugar um, or a.k.a. corn mm-hmm. syrup yeah. into their ingredients. I mean, granted, it is cheaper to produce the corn syrup. It is also a, a preservative for the food, so they do make it last longer. But if you're sticking if you're buying food and sticking it in your in your refrigerator for more than a couple of weeks, dude, you would never meant to eat it. 
Like you just yeah. bought it just to say you did. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I mean, uh, just buy what you need. And, you know, it's not like there's not services that would deliver to you. Or now that, you know, because of uh, the, the whole uh, pandemic, you can get curbside. And that's what I'm doing. Uh, these these keto pizza crusts for uh, that are Bonza brand, I, I just get them on Target and I go pick them up. They're like eight bucks a piece. It's just like a DiGiorno. It's not even a big deal. And it's filling too. Yeah, it is. It's really good. It's so worth it. So uh, next time you're in, if you find yourself in Target next time, uh, Josh, look for that Bonza brand. Uh, you won't regret Bonza it, man. It's, uh, get, the, get the mac and cheese and then get a few extra slices of cheddar, sharp cheddar slices and mm -hmm. throw them in when you're oh dude oh dude i, I can't right, even take it show. chef's kiss i can't a even fucking take it right food. now hey and you know what if i don't like it i get to punch you square in the face and then give it to me and give me the rest of the, the... I I, i'm so confident you'll enjoy it though look i actually like it <laughs> all right because i think cauliflower is, i think cauliflower is gross so this is a good alternative <laughs> it yeah no, um agreed yeah, I don't mind the cauliflower. I enjoy the cauliflower. I've, I've eaten cauliflower uh, as a side for my entire life. My mom used to just steam cauliflower with our, with our food. Ugh. So it was it's like I, I'm, I'm fine with it. But, you know, being married to, um, to, to, to a person who, who doesn't enjoy it, I, I need to seek alternatives. And my God, was this a good find. I mean, yes. Fu, all that means is that extra cauliflower for you. No, because we're not even buying it anymore because of her. Oh, yeah. oh, oh because of me then. Because yes. Yeah. Oh. Guess who told you about this pasta? It was me. Yeah, I know. You're welcome. I mean, necessity <laughs> is the mother of invention. <laughs> so uh, anyway, enough about enough about my keto. Uh, you guys ready for for some geeking out? Yeah, man. All right, yeah. let's get going. Geekin' Out is brought to us by Diamond in the Rough. You've seen gems to cover your cat's anus. Now introducing one for your pooch, too. Diamond in the Rough. Get yours today. It's a rough life. <laughs> yeah. Is that for dogs specifically? Well, yeah, because rough. Uh, uh, okay. Jesus Christ. It's rough. Oh. Yeah. Just put it, just put it, uh, it hangs off their tail like the, one, like the ones you've seen for cats. And it covers their balloon knot. Hmm. <laughs> so you don't have to see it. Um, anywho, what are we talking about today? Food? Fo Loki. More food? <laughs> More food. More food. No, well, well before we talk about Loki, Josh, did you want to talk about that pop-up uh, Morty's first? Yeah, food. So Rick and Morty is actually, season five, I believe, is um, going to be releasing. <laughs> it's just <laughs> fresh as fuck. <laughs> tomorrow so fresh foods yep. so fresh and uh they actually opened up a wendy's as a morty's in panorama city uh, los angeles so this entire wendy's is just decked out with a gigantic inflatable tunnel sized morty that's laying on his side and everyone's just going <laughs> through him as the drive through inside they have a bunch of visuals um <laughs> where you could see tvs it's all psychedelic and they give you a pickle Rick shake. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's that's one of the shakes that they got. Uh, Steph, you have more information on it, don't you? I think uh, you, you looked it up. Yeah. It, it's only until June 20. So today and tomorrow are the last days for it. Well, by the time this airs, it's over with. So uh, yeah. yeah. If you didn't go, you missed out. You missed yeah, out. So. Um, I, I would have already posted this on the Instagram. So, um, and this is, we're recording this on Saturday. So if you, if you follow us on Instagram, you would have seen the, uh, the details for this. Mm -hmm. So get with it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm reading this off of the Cartoon Network News. Wendy's now has two exclusive Coca-Cola freestyle mixes based off of Rick and Morty. The first one is Mellow Yellow Berry Jerry Bori. And the second one is Mellow Yellow Portal Time Lemon Lime. God damn, those are long names. Um, also available with zero sugar. Oh, Ooh. keto. Mm. I don't Thinking trust that. Thinking of everybody. Though. I really don't trust that one bit, though. <laughs> it's nothing but cocaine. Yeah, imagine. Portal Time Lemon Lime. Jerry Berry Bori. Here's a straw for your mouth and one for your nose. 
Oh, and then um. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm gonna use both. <laughs> use it for both at <laughs> the same time. So Wendy's I only need one. Wendy's Twitter actually changed their um, display name to Morty's. Mm-hmm. And even the logo, instead of it being the little girl, it's it's fucking Morty with the pigtails. <laughs> 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 Sir, this is a Morty's. Oh, and then yeah. they put, I read this to you guys earlier, but let me just read one of my favorite tweets from Morty's. If someone sees a Mr. Meeseeks walking around 14... 645 Roscoe Boulevard, Panorama City, California. Please let him know that his break is over. The sooner he finishes his shift, the sooner he can disappear. <laughs> <laughs> Wubba lubba grub grub. Welcome eh. to Morty's. Morty's. Yeah. Uh-huh. Man, we should go there. Well, dope. I mean, anybody who is uh, from the San Gabriel Valley area in Southern California, uh, this is kind of like the way they've built the, this this drive through. It reminds me of the donut hole. If you guys have ever driven through La Puente, and that's that historic yeah. donut hole where it's like a giant donut that you drive through. Uh, that's kind of what it resembles a little bit. It does, yeah. I mean, you know what? I, what I love about Wendy's, besides the burgers, is that their Twitter. Is on has point. always had some of the most savage responses to <laughs> fans or like or the like customers. Yeah. Um. I'm I'm really trying to find some on here. It's hard to find them, but like if you just follow them, chances are you'll see a funny retweet of them just talking shit to another fan. So, uh, yeah, definitely follow the the Wendy's on Twitter. Yeah, it's definitely worth making it. David Thomas proud. <laughs> 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 All right, Foos, I think it's time. For the Loki. Yeah, dude. What do you got about what do you got on Loki? Because I really enjoyed this last episode. This last episode was awesome. I mean, it starts off with with Loki pretty much going through his orientation of being a TVA member, mm-hmm. and he's talking with Miss Ta- uh, Miss Minute on his little desk. Just uh, the whole setting alone is just hilarious to me because it just makes it feel like a nineteen twenties or or nineteen thirties cop cop drama yeah where they're just in the bullpen and then there they are you know just chilling right um so the whole purpose of this episode is for loki to help them find the loki variant uh and my favorite one of my my favorite parts of this episode is when they bring out the sequence of all the different lokis that they've run into over the years Mm -hmm. there was the the, and i have a list here there was the tour de france loki (laughs) um, loki who won the tour de france there is the horned Loki, where it's like a huge monster mm-hmm. um, with big horns. There was our Loki, uh, L6792. There's party Loki. Who who I have to point out is, is for some reason, no longer blue. Yeah, that's true. Well, remember, he uses magic to cover up his skin. Even when he's naked? Remember in episode yes, one when they stripped them? Really, dude? When he can't use his magic? Yeah. Shut that, up. There's some Don't you dare. There's holes in this logic, mm, man. Continuity is not Well, foo, if you if you watch Thor 1, you have to remember that when Thor when uh, Odin picked him up, all his skin changed. So he has the ability to just change his skin color without magic. That he changed his skin to uh, like, I don't like it. pale white. I'm just saying, bro, it's in there. It's there. <laughs> continuity know. is there. And then uh there's a uh, obviously warrior Loki and then there is Lady Loki, who we find out later in the episode, uh, but more on that later. And then uh, pretty much it just goes into Loki, you know, investigating, figuring out where the hell he can possibly find this Loki. And he determines that the Loki variant they're hunting down is hiding in apocalypses. Mm-hmm. So uh, the first apocalypse they venture off into is the one in Pompeii. And it was a great sequence where he's dope. just going off saying, we're from the future, everyone, speaking, you know, Italian because he's a god. He can speak any and all languages, I'm assuming. Yeah. Of course. Um, but what was funny, and I don't think a lot of people realize this, is this isn't Owen Wilson's first time in Pompeii. Uh, this is actually his say? second instance. The first time was in Night at the Museum when he was that little cowboy. <sighs> <laughs> and when they when he was with that <laughs> one right. Nor- Rome legionnaire and that little member that figurine of Pompeii that they're in just blows up and they're yeah. just running in the scene. Now he's actually That's in like, there though. 
this time <laughs> with a mustache. Well, that's why he said we shouldn't be here. We, we got to go. He that... knows all too well what's going to happen. Uh... Well, and, and I like how um, Loki tested his hypothesis. Uh, you know, he, he, he went out of his way to try to change history, but it didn't change because they were all going to die anyway. Yeah. And so that's, and that's can... I, I really like how they explain that. You know, Marvel, the MCU has done a really good job at explaining their intentions. Time like, travel. Like, yeah, like tra- time travel and, and, and multiverse logic. Um, now, granted, if you really look into it, there's going to be holes in it. But if, if you're not taking it so seriously, then you, it, it, makes for good, it makes for good television. Um, they, Definitely. I think, I think their explanation for time travel is much more simplistic than like DC's multiverse. Um, at least when it was introduced, mm. uh, a lot of people were kind of still thrown off. Like, wait, there's an Earth too. There's an, you know, whereas this one, it's not that there's another Earth. There are other timelines that have just spread out, and they just erase them so that way they never existed. Right, and so, um, and for a villain to hide in said apocalypses, it's it's perfect. Exactly. They yeah. they won't be they give off what's known as variant energy. Mm-hmm. And if there's no variant energy, it's hard for them to find it. And by them hiding there, um, it's easy f- for them to miss it. So when they finally figure it out, they go to this big rocks cart um, in at, like in Alabama in like 2045. I think that was the year. And that's where they run into the Lady Loki. Um, and. What w- what I liked about this was the fact that, you know, him and their back and forth and how she was transferring her body or transferring from body to body to body, which kind of also begs the question, is this Lady Loki still Loki or is this just another body that he took over? So we Uh-oh. still may be missing the real Loki's body. Hmm. Because huh. remember, the mag- every person that she touches, the magic is, cha- is being exchanged interesting so, it will i mean we still gotta wait to see in the next couple of episodes but pretty much what we see then is is that what this lady loki was doing or this variant loki was doing was that she was stealing all of these reset charges these these big bombs that the tva use to reset the timeline mm-hmm. and what she ended up using them for we find out at the end of the episode is that she pretty much carpet bombed the entire timeline from start to finish and and just erased and messed up the timeline completely and created all of these different branches and i think what um from what it looks like she carpet bombed the apocalypses Mm -hmm. because if you look at if you look at the list of places that were were bombed um i have the list here these are the branches of the timeline that she pretty much restarted vormir the location of the soul stone this was already teased in the tra- trailer but this time it's for sure they're going to go back to vormir to see the soul stone asgard um which again uh, who knows at what point in time i believe it was during ragnarok yeah so it could have been that time uh the next one is jotunheim the realm of the frost giants so we're going to see loki go back to jotunheim post um destruction that he did in thor mm-hmm I don't know if it's going to be around that time again. Uh, and then next one is Hala, the Kree homeworld. Mm-hmm. So we're going to go back to the Kree. Um, and again, we'll see exactly what time. I think this is when Captain Marvel's supposed to be there. Okay. Uh, and then we go to Xandar, um, the homeworld and headquarters of the Nova Corps, the one we saw in Guardians of the Galaxy, and that were wiped out in Infinity War. So I believe this is just going to bring back more Nova stuff and potentially branch off from there. That's what's going to sh- introduce Nova into the Guard- Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, because they said they had plans um, for Nova to finally arrive in Phase 4 or 5, according mm-hmm. to like Kevin Feige. Mm-hmm. So he's, he's coming in soon. And then there is Ego, Kurt Russell himself. Mm-hmm. And then lastly, but certainly not least, Titan, the moon where Thanos himself is from. And I think they're pretty much going to go to the point when th- when his home world crashes. Remember, it's supposed to like um, destroy itself in some short sort of way um, because of all the famine and overpopulation. Yeah. So I think it's going to be during that part. This, these pretty much all of these um, different timelines and different places and scenes where 
where they reset. This is these are pretty much where we're going to be going to the rest of this the rest of this season. Um, and we all thought, you know, it's funny. We all thought Wandavision was going to be the one that opened up the multiverse. Yeah. All right. Nope. It's just an introduction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was, it was a, just an introduction. It was a tease. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah nothing but a tease, and this right here just pretty much opened it up for everyone and oh man allowing the like, the mutants to come in josh right i knew it right like mephisto <laughs> mephisto's behind us all wow. yep there's a comic book pretending called. to be a loki variant there's you know yeah. when when they go into the 80s in the episode there's actually a comic book 1985 marvel comic book and guess who's on the cover along with the avengers you guessed the it. The X Men. Ah. Uh, mm. <gasps> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's uncanny. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Quite dude. uncanny. But I can't wait Thank until you. they introduce Wolverine. Because we all know oh, that yeah. he's gonna be the first one. Well, I mean the the we already have Deadpool and oh, yeah, yeah. And and you know, Scarlet Witch. But um yeah. who do you who do you figure are, are they gonna get it? Do you think that they're going to get a new actor for Wolverine for the MCU? Yeah. So I I think I personally think they will for the when they revive them, but I'm hearing I'm hearing some things that Hugh Jackman is actually possibly going to be coming back for Deadpool 3. Mhm. I'm down that for that. He be, because you remember he had promised a while back that he would only ever return to play Wolverine if marvel if it if he was going to be in the marvel universe right if, if marvel somehow got the x-men mm-hmm. we did it like did next it, the following year it happened yeah, yeah yeah so i i think um and then there are talks again like he said that he's possibly coming back for the well for the deadpool 3 movie mm-hmm. so i'm holding on beyond hope that that is true again we have to take these rumors with a grain of salt well ryan reynolds and hugh jackman are like buddies now oh yeah they just, They've always been, but they have like this love hate relationship. Yeah. I don't know if you guys follow them oh, yeah. on Instagram or Twitter. Oh, dude, it's it's hilarious. It's hilarious. <laughs> the year they the year that Jake Gyllenhaal and Hugh Jackman made Ryan Reynolds show up in a present sweater, and they <laughs> said that they were all gonna match, and he was the only fool that did it. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and they all took a picture. They're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> what a suck. Uh, yeah, I, I the back and forth between them, it just makes so much sense to have have them be in a movie together. Mm-hmm. Like, if if Ryan Reynolds is pissing off Hugh Jackman now in real life, he's pissing him off even more. In that oh, movie. yeah, as Wolverine, dude. He, and Wolverine being the straight man. Yo, oh, it's, dude. The per- it's the perfect pairing, man. <laughs> it's the perfect pairing. It needs to happen. Yeah. It, like, it needs to happen. So, yeah, I'm excited. I'm hoping that, um, you know, obviously Loki just opened the doors for all everything in, in the future that's coming out, even uh, in the near future of what's coming out. For Marvel, like with the Eternals, with Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, um, the Spider-Man movie, which is going to expand on the on the multiverse. Mm-hmm. So it's dude, Marvel again. They're just showing. They're just showing. They know what they're doing, man. Um, especially with the uh, the Avengers Campus. I don't know if you guys saw the the videos and stuff. Mm-hmm. I saw California clips. Adventure. Yeah, it looks dope. It does. It does. But I really do not want to be waiting in a line for three hours just to get into the park. I thought you had to no reserve it. Sir. Like you have to make reservations. You do, but there are people are showing like the there are people like outside on Catella, even like Jesus. Lined up, and it, it just looks insane, man. As soon as they lifted the no mask mandate, Orange County just said decided, hey guys, let's do this. Let's show we can bring COVID back in just one day. <laughs> but, you know, we'll, well see. Well, a good chunk uh, yeah, of the population's I'm... got the vaccine, so we're hoping it doesn't come down to that. They're letting out of oh, state I mean, boo, now. this is OC. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. Bro. Well, yeah, they didn't care from the beginning, so what's... Huh. I don't know. So uh, what's the point? Of, yeah, so why would they care about there, getting a vaccine? Right? Everybody down there has gotten it already, so they at least have some yeah. kind of immunity. <laughs> herd immunity amongst everyone we all got each other sick but we're alive, we're alive. yeah made it this oh, far fucking OC. yeah jesus all right uh loki. anyways uh <laughs> yeah man look i can't i can't wait for loki episode three um if you guys notice too the episodes are getting longer 
Um, this episode was much longer than episode one. And according to the upcoming times, it's just going to get even longer. This next one is going to be, I think, 51 minutes full, like the actual scenes itself mm -hmm. with the three minutes and credits. So it's going to be like they're slowly building up to an hour exactly of footage, which was my one gripe with the other two series is that like they say it was like 40 uh, an hour. But realistically, it was only like 40 minutes with like 15 minutes of fucking and and credits right. and so on yeah. so it, i mean but you know what again i i love it tom hiddleston is the ex was the executive producer and is the executive mm -hmm. executive producer of this show so he had so much input and i love that he really put his stamp on this series um wasn't yeah, man, it's, wasn't there talks of him um trying to become the next james bond it was it was being considered before they decided to go with um the actress that's going to be in the new movie with him uh -huh. I, I i cannot remember her name um but they decided to go with a female bond this time instead of uh, a female 007. Well, 007 it's not going to be james bond yeah, yeah it's not going to be james bond anymore it's going to be 007 yeah so i thought it was going to be idris elba no, bond. those were rumors. Oh. Those were rumors, um, and that it was not confirmed. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll double check to see the exact act actress's name, <laughs> but I remember fans really wanted um, Tom Hiddleston to be the next 007. I mean, it makes it just makes sense. I yeah. mean, yeah, yeah. It, it, when you see him outside of the Loki garb, he he's a handsome dude. He has a point too too pointy of a face for my liking. But mm -hmm. uh, but he I think his acting chops were good enough to be if not better than good enough uh, to be the next Bond. But um, mm -hmm. it's it's going to be a weird transition, you know, um, with the world being as woke as it is these days, uh, with be you know having a a female 007. But yeah, um, I mean, I'm not I'm not taking anything away from her. Maybe she has the chops, um, you know, to to pull it off. I mean, I've seen I mean we've seen weirder shit happen before, but. The actress's name is Lashana Lynch. Uh, she was confirmed to be inheriting the mantle of 007 from Bond uh, in the summer of 2019. And she is going to be showing up in the new movie, No Time to Die, which is set to release at the towards the end of the year uh, this year. So, yeah, I mean, right there we'll get our first glimpse of her in the movie, mm -hmm. um, see how much we like her. I, I think we will, because honestly, they haven't really gone wrong with any James Bonds, mm -hmm. in my opinion. I mean, if you think about it, the worst James Bond, the, the worst one, technically speaking, that we've ever had was um, Timothy Dalton. And that's Timothy Fulton Dalton, guys. I mean, yeah. that's that's not even that bad. He was only <laughs> so, he was only James Bond for one movie, right? I think so. Two. Two? Two. Two movies. Well, that shows you how yeah, much I, I didn't think care it about. was... Um, <laughs> Let me see. Let me see how much one. Well, because yeah, it started off. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, keep, keep going, guys. The story of how to become a double O was that you had to kill at least two people, right? So it doesn't necessarily yes. mean because they're their whole agency. So we're just going to see a different agent at this point. Mm -hmm. so, Most people are going to yeah. argue that then why not just give it another number? You know why? Why keep it 007? But that just means that Bond is retiring. I, I take it, and somebody has to fill in those shoes. That's my. I'm just, I don't know I, how this works. <laughs> I'm, well, yeah, they I don't might. either. I'm not really quite sure how they're going to pull it off. Um, I'm really interested. In, I mean, I'm going to watch the movie regardless because I love James Bond. But yeah. you know, in general. But yeah, no, it's going to be it's it's going to be really interesting to see what how they pull this off. Um, so here are the Bonds and how many movies they've done. Um, so Sean Connery. Obviously, the OG from Doctor No in 1962. Mm -hmm. uh, he played. He was in Doctor No, From Russia with Love, Goldfinger, Thunderball. Um, you only live twice, and Diamonds Are Forever, um, and also Never Say Never Again. Um, so, Roger Sean Connery so far has been playing. Bond, had played Bond the most, um, and spanned several decades too. Because in between his runs as um, Bond. There were other three other actors that portrayed Bond during that time. Um, so it went Sean Connery from 1962 to 65. Then you had David Niven, who was in one Bond in Casino Royale. Then You Only Live Once was Sean Connery again. And then on Her Majesty's Secret Service, George Lazenby um, was Bond. 
And then you had Roger Moore um, after Diamonds mm-hmm. Are Forever with mm-hmm. Connery again. Roger Moore was in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Bond movies. So wow. pretty, I think tied with, with Connery. Um, from 73 to 81. And then again from 83 to 85. Um, and it's funny because Connery and Moore both played Bond, two different versions of Bond in the same year. Oh, with wow. uh, Connery in Never Say Never Again in 1983, and then Roger Moore in Octopussy in 1983. Mm-hmm. And then uh, after Roger Moore, then it's Timothy Dalton in two movies, uh, The Living Daylights and License to Kill. Okay. So very two of the pretty much lesser known Bond movies, but again, it, Tim- Timothy Dalton still did a good job. And then immediately after that, we get one of our best interpretations, Pierce Brosnan. Pierce Bro- oh my God, how good was that movie? So right. good. Golden Eye was amazing. Tomorrow Never Dies. The World Is Not Enough. Mm-hmm. Die Another Day. All great movies. All of them. Um, he, Pierce Brosnan actually also did the voice and uh, motion capture for the Bond video games. Oh, that's um, right. Like in, yeah, they had one specific Bond video game that was almost its own movie. Um, and Pierce Brosnan did all the voice acting. You could play it. It was great. It was one of the best video games I played. I can't. Mm-hmm. I'll find out later. But um, was yeah. it in a GoldenEye on it, N64? Yeah. No, it was. It, GoldenEye was on, on X64, but there was one on um, GameCube. Um, and I'll find the game right now. Okay. But it was that one one's on legendary. GameCube. That GoldenEye game on N64, that's the one people still talk about. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, GoldenEye, James Bond, 007, Agent Under Fire. Oh. Um, that one That one is pretty much a whole entire movie um, in just one video game. It's it's awesome. Great, great video games. Nice. The whole James Bond game series is just incredible to begin with. Um, oh, there was also, let's see here, 007... Everything or Nothing. Yes, this one was on Xbox. It, it also included Pierce Brosnan. So Pierce Brosnan didn't just also lend his voice, you know, talents to the screen. He lent it to the, you know, the video game community. Well, he and, went into a lot of uh, uh, VO work right after his his Bond days. I mean, he he was like mm-hmm. he was all over the place. As like uh, sometimes he was like a robotic kind of thing. He he has that that charming British accent that people just want to hear. Uh, he was like on an episode of The Simpsons, I think a uh, a Treehouse Horror uh, <laughs> special where you know how like uh, how do I describe? It? I don't think it was a Treehouse. Now that I'm thinking about it, but it yeah, uh, it was. It was, it was it? the the Smart House when he was the Smart House. Yeah, kind of like uh, in uh, in Space Odyssey where you have that 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 uh, what was it? Hal? He was the Hal yeah. in this episode. Yeah, yeah, that was dope. Yeah, it was a good episode. If you haven't seen it, definitely need to watch it. I can't do it's that. A, it's a really good one. I'm afraid I can't do that, Josh. Uh, what else are we talking about oh man so much so much else Mm. is going on right now um you know obviously we we just talked about loki Mm. but we just got a trailer for the new season of titans season three tit ends the tit ends foo Mm -hmm. the tit ends are bringing bringing it up to notch man i mean Last season was a great season um, where we finally saw the evolution of Nightwing. Yeah. Um, I was the introduction uh, b- of Nightwing. Before we started recording, I was talking about how yesterday I was checking out episode one of season one, and uh, the acting has come a long way. Now, what, I, what you have to consider, if you've never seen Titans, on H- which is now on HBO, when it first came out, it was introduced to us on the DC app. And 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 it no, no longer exists if you try to look this up. But um, it was it was an app that we talked about a lot on this um, uh, on this podcast. That you know you can read a lot of the pretty much every single DC comic that they would put on there. You can read it on your television and then watch a lot of the original content uh, that came out of that app, which is Titans, uh, Swamp Thing, Doom Patrol that spawned from Titans. Doom uh, Patrol's and, good though. It's it, weird, but it's like it got good after we stopped good. watching it for a while because we're like, ah, this is lame. But then people are like giving it five stars. All of a sudden, we're like, great, we just stopped watching this thing <laughs> every and, time. And every I couldn't time. be happier that they merged with HBO. I mean, they're Warner Brothers, so it, it was only the 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 most practical thing you could do. And uh, now that I'm looking at this trailer, 
the production value, the storyline is going in the direction everybody's hoping they would have gone. Uh, I can't wait to see what they're going to do with the introduction of all these plots and characters that they, uh, that they were leading to into the end of season two. Yeah, I mean, at the end of season two, you know, uh, Wonder Girl dies um, pretty much. Or Hank does she? Are... Oh, mm. she's coming back, bros. She's coming back. Lazarus Pit. Um, I think Raven, Raven went with them, right? She went to Themyscira with the Amazons. I don't remember. I need to rewatch a lot of those. I got to rewatch that. I got to rewatch that season. That season was good. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And then uh, if we also remember Jason, he goes on off on his own after finding out that pretty much Ravager Rose fucked him over um, and was just using him and he didn't know if he could trust her. So he left on his own. Yes. So we'll cut to to this trailer. The beginning of this trailer, we see Jason going into what looks like an empty carnival. Mm-hmm. Carnival, huh? And then he goes and he sees this cop hanging from this fucking wall. And then right when he goes up to a close face, face up, up of this cop, you see the Joker smile. And you know what they're doing now. You just know. Automatically, you know what's going to happen. And then it cuts to another scene where you see none other than the famous crowbar. Jason's best friend, the crowbar. Mm -hmm. And now, it doesn't happen in a warehouse. It's like in an open area, right? Yeah, this time it's different. because. um, So what we're alluding to, people, folks, so those of you that are not in the know, we're alluding to the death in the family Mm storyline where DC decides to kill off Jason Todd. Um, and not just decide, they pretty much leave it up to the fans and ask the fans, do you want to save him or do you want him to die? <laughs> and the fans voted to kill off Jason Todd. He's a douche. A one, do, he was a giant douche. Uh, even in the comics, he no one liked him. He was an abrasive, cocky, you know, He's no Dick Grayson. Robin. No Dick Grayson yeah. by any means whatsoever. <clears throat> but he had the brute strength and... Um, you know, he, he, he had the combat ability, mm-hmm. but he didn't have the brains. He didn't really have the wit that Dick has. So pretty much this season in, in Titan season three, they will be going to Gotham. They will be, this it will yes. entirely set place in Gotham where Jason pretty much, I think they're coming, they're going to see, um, like come together in Gotham after Jason dies, um, and is killed by the Joker. Uh, we're going to see Batman again. Um, the well, version we have, of Batman that we, we saw. We've only seen Batman as a dream sequence, right, so far? We only, we've only seen Bruce Wayne actually have the dialogue. Yeah. Correct. Yes, we haven't seen <clears throat> Batman himself, but we've seen the actor that plays Bruce Wayne, mm-hmm. so we'll finally see him in the bat suit to see him. He's an older Bruce Wayne, like. admittedly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, you know, it's it's fine. I mean, it's, you know, whatever. You could take or leave it with it. I mean, right. it's fo- we're focused on the Titans mostly in this yeah. In this show. Um, but we're also going to see Barbara Gordon in her Oracle wheelchair. Um, you know, we're going to we're going to get that whole storyline. F- and then we finally got a glimpse of Jason Todd in the Red Hood, co- Red Hood costume. Mm. Um, the Red Hood looks amazing. It looks so authentic, but it also looks really good um, with how they're making it real life. Because, you know, sometimes the comic, you know, when they try to make these suits, it just looks really weird. Um, when you try to make them look good, you know, yeah. like their, like their actual comic book counterparts. Mm-hmm. But I think this looks really well. Um, look, it's done really well, and I like, cannot wait. I think it. Yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say, for example, um, they didn't even try to make Vibe look the way he did in the comic <laughs> books for Flash. <laughs> Not at all. It's like, is it, this guy's yeah. just gonna? I mean, maybe for Pride Month, but <laughs> it's not. It wouldn't. It wouldn't fly. I don't think it would fly. <laughs> Not at all. Yeah, uh, that was the one thing I did not like about how they did vibe in the show. I mean, obviously, and then, too, he gets his powers taken away, and he still brings back the tech to be vibe. It's like, Dick, you should have just kept the fucking powers. You just defeated this whole purpose. Right. Just a roundabout way to get yourself killed. <laughs> um, yeah. But, it, I mean, yeah, but we'll more on the Flash at another later point. Uh, yeah, so Titans, Titans season three, um, it will be premiering this October, October twenty first, um, on Thursdays. Uh, I'm sorry, it's going to premiere August twelfth through the twenty first of October. Um, so the first three episodes will be available on the twelfth, and then after that, it's just going to be premiering um, once a week. Okay, October. Yeah. Oh. 
Uh, August 12th is when it will premiere. Oh. October 21st is when it will end. In wow. the season right. will end. Okay. Yeah. There's some cool um, promotional images of Starfire and Blackfire. Like they're getting their suits They're now? getting their suits. Mm-hmm. Like she's she's in a full body suit. She doesn't look like an escort anymore. No. Well. She looks pretty cool. <laughs> it's, it's completely different from, you know, what she's wearing in the comic books, which is pretty much a bikini. Trust me, I didn't mind the escort garb, but um, but she looks badass now. Yeah. They gotta have they gotta have chitlins watching this show. So <laughs> it's HBO. Well, it's H- it's, it's a mature show to begin with, so I don't really think they're marketing it, it for. In episode children. one, Robin scrapes the guy's face on a brick wall. What do you mean? Yeah, that's true. And he fucking and then another guy his- uh, he breaks the guy's <laughs> car window and then scrapes his face on the broken glass on the bottom of it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Well, you know, I, I, one thing I, I almost forgot to bring up is that if they're bringing up. The Red Hood, there's got to be a Lazarus pit in the Rachel Al Gould, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's yeah, going to be so, introduced. Definitely. It has to be. I'm looking at the mm-hmm. episode titles right now. Oh, and the well. fir- <laughs> Yeah, episode five is called Lazarus. <laughs> the first 10 names are already up. Mm. Nice. See, so, cool. I, so I, my theory may be correct that Holy they may bring shit, in Red shit, dude. Hood episode one is Barbara Gordon. That's probably when she gets shot. Episode two is Red Hood. So that's probably how that goes down. Gets episode introduced. three mm-hmm. is Hank and Dove. They probably rekindle. Uh, let's see. What, Blackfire? Blackfire is a Starfire sister that you remember. She tries oh. to get her back. Mm-hmm. And so then Lazarus, four. Lady Vic, 51%, Home and Soul and Troubled Waters. And the last three are still TBA. Mm-hmm. TBD. TBA. Oh, TBA. TBA. Yeah. All right, nice. Nice, man. Yeah, I can't wait. I love this show. Um, I'm glad it's finally coming back. If you guys have not watched season one or two, definitely give them a watch on HBO Max. I mean, it's... And don't awesome take it show. so seriously in season one, for fuck's sake. You gotta, you gotta remember the budget that they had at the time and, the, and what they... Just keep in mind what they were actually trying to accomplish is getting picked up by HBO... <laughs> Or by a, mm-hmm. by even just a bigger a bigger network, and uh, I'm glad that they were successful in doing so because I think that the storyline moved along very smoothly, considering what they were dealing with. Um, the the actors, and I, I'm not talking about their acting abilities, but just the actors and their features were a great way. Uh, it was a great casting decision. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They all look like what they would in the comic books. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah. All, it definitely. Definitely, man. And they've all grown into the roles. Like you can definitely tell they were trying to get a feel for the character itself in the first few in the first season. Mm-hmm. Um, every single one of them were really just trying to get their feel for it. And season two, they hit their stride. So just get through season one. It's only six episodes, I believe. Um, it wasn't really long for season because mm-hmm. they were really hoping that it would get picked up. Um, just watch season one. Get through it, guys, because it's totally worth it once you get to season two. Season two is with uh, Asai, um, Asai Morales as Death, Deathstroke. Mm-hmm. Great, great portrayal, great acting. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, Foos, since we're on the subject of Batman, I have a question for you, Foos. Question. This is, a, this is a, we need to know. We need to know this. Come on. Does, does Batman eat box? <laughs> uh, well, I, I don't know Not if Batman why. does, but Bruce Wayne definitely does. Oh, oh! I mean, foo! Come on! How would he get? How else would he get all those ladies? Yeah, you gotta right. eat box, man. So, what we're talking about here, folks, for those of you that are not in the know, <laughs> listening in, and wondering what the fuck are these guys talking about? <laughs> DC recently nixed a scene from the upcoming Harley Quinn animated series, where the the animators <laughs> had a scene where Batman eats out Catwoman. Uh. Yes, I know what you're thinking. Is this a Pornhub episode? <laughs> no, sir. It certainly is not, though it <laughs> probably passes one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure there's a demographic out there for something like this. <laughs> uh, but so, Warner Brothers saw this and they immediately said, "No, no, <laughs> no, no. Heroes don't do that. We have toys to sell." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, come on. If kids are watching this animated show, 
they should not be watching this animated show. It's not so for kids. It's not for kids. It's not for kids at all. It's not. It's an adult a man at animation show. So mm. kids don't watch this. Second, I mean, come on, bro. Heroes don't eat box. Then they're not a hero, man. In fact, <laughs> they're a villain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're a villain, sir. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and <laughs> I, I don't know, man. And we in this in this uh, in this series, we've already seen like a lesbian. And, you know, sexual scene with her and Poison Ivy. Uh, why is this one uh, a bridge too far for WB? Is it just because Batman is the face of DC and they don't want him interacting with other characters this way? I mean, Fu, it'd, it'd be just they'd probably feel the same if they saw Superman getting railed, um, you know, by a line of doomsdays or something. I mean, I don't know. I'm just is that what doomsday is up to? Is that what he does? Like, what's That's he... what he's trying to do. Foo, he's trying to dominate all the Kryptonians. That one is also Any sexual. Way he can. Yeah. <laughs> Good guy. I, and you know what's funny is the the outpour of tweets and responses to bat- superheroes don't do that has just been immense. Zack Snyder recently posted a, a picture of cartoon Batman eating out Catwoman and the caption of it, it's canon. It's canon. <laughs> <laughs> so he still has the cowl. He still has the cowl on? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to yeah, get dirty. Just take the cowl off. No, see, he has the mouth part open, yeah. so that's all yeah. he needs. He doesn't need anything else. He doesn't need to expose yeah. who he is. Just to, just to. Uh, they're married. Just to dive on some, on some muffs. <laughs> <laughs> He's going carpet munching, foo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are also uh, shirts that are made. If you go on shirtpunch.com, this is a free promotion for Shirt Punch. <laughs> Uh, they have a shirt out right now where they have a new shirt every day, like that. That's like a sale that they have. Uh, and this week's, it's the animated Batman and the animated Catwoman, and the, the behind it, it says, "Heroes don't do that." <laughs> <laughs> well, Fu, you know what I got to say about that? It's just fresh as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Batman said when he went down there. Oh! Yeah. Ah! And despite the leather garb, it you know it's pretty fresh. Mm-hmm. You got to stay fresh, man. <laughs> got to stay fresh. Subway, stay fresh. Yep. Stay fresh. <sighs> Be fresh. Yep. Well, uh, all right, foos. Uh, I'm, I, when is any idea when that new season of Harley Quinn is coming out? Um, you know what? I can look that up right now, foo. If you want to just riff a little bit. Nah. <laughs> well, Fu, what do you think? What did you think of uh, Corella? I know you had mentioned Oh, right, right. Yeah, I mentioned Corella. But... I, I thought, uh, you know, speaking of Batman, I thought that this was, uh, it was very satisfying. I was very surprised because, you know, a lot of the the, the commentary that I was hearing was this, this was this was a pretty much a Disney-fied Devil Wears Prada, which I agree with. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't seen Devil Wears Prada in its entirety. I've seen because I used to work at Best Buy, so we just kind of had it on. And, you know, when I would walk by that TV, I would I would catch some scenes of it. So yeah, it's, it's pretty much that. But Cruella just starts to troll the Baroness and she pretty much becomes the Joker and, and with, with all of her, you know, with all of her schemes. And I really appreciated the way they did all that. Now, the one middle finger that I felt Disney gave us all was at the end with her, her death escape. It happened way too fast. I'm, I'm, spoilers for those who haven't seen it. And I'm not trying to give away too much, but um, and I'm not going to give away too many details. But the fact, and when you watch it, you'll see what I mean. Um, that you know, when she, we, we all think that she's about to die, but you know, we all—it's a prequel. She doesn't die, so we already kind of knew that. That's why this is this isn't a spoiler. We've but, seen a hundred and two Dalmatians. Oh, for fuck's sake, that's the worst one. <laughs> um, when she comes back into the fold in that same kind of 15 minute period, it's like, all right, how does she get the makeup on? That's the one middle finger I got out of all this. And uh, when she opens up the parachute towards the end, Steph, you haven't seen this, but you'll appreciate it when you do see it. You remember watching uh, Barb and, and uh, what is it? Barb and Star go to, <laughs> go to Vista, Vista Del Mar. Del Mar. And they fall off the cliff, thinking we're there, you know we're gonna see them plummet to their death, and their um what Bar- is their parachute pants, their, their capris I... open up and <laughs> act as as parachutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! 
It reminded me of that so yeah. much. Um, now, that's uh, aside from that, the, the movie is amazing. I, I recommend it uh, nine out of ten, um, considering how how good it is. Um, but the I mean, one thing, the, the one the thing other, that killed the me side was actors, Horace and Jasper. Oh, oh perfect! Wink. Yeah. Wink, the little one-eyed chihuahua mm-hmm. that they use for every every scenario that they have. Yeah. Oh man. It's, and when um, he's a giant rat. Uh, if if I'm um, if I'm playing devil's advocate, and yeah, I'm not I'm not hating on the diversity here uh, of of the movie, but in 1970s London, was it that diverse? You know, I'm. That's a good question. I don't know. Um, I wasn't even born yet. Yeah. Well, I, God damn. <laughs> um, but I'm just I'm just saying I, I don't mind the, I, I actually enjoyed how diverse that cast was uh, but you know when you think about it historically and I've, I've no, I have no idea I haven't looked this up but 1970s London I doubt it was as diverse as they portray it in Cruella but uh, I enjoyed the shit out of it man it was really 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 good well if you think about it 1970s that's what height David Bowie David Bowie or is he Ziggy Stardust coming in coming about yeah so yeah. I mean, it stands to reason that mm-hmm. potentially it's it is that diverse. So I mean, I would I would probably uh, I would probably see a lot you know a lot of uh, Indian people there, uh, mm-hmm. maybe maybe some black people there, but I don't know. I I, I saw like pretty much the, the, a flurry of every kind of nationality in this movie, which is cool. I just don't know if historically yeah. that's, as, that's as accurate as they portrayed it. It's believable, though, because, mm-hmm. I mean, think about it. It's fucking UK, United Britain. That They are pretty much ruled the world at one point, and we're, we're all over the place. So yeah, they that's can true. All, yeah, that's true. It, it's, not, it's not hard to believe. Mm-hmm. But, no, nah, man, yeah, I, I liked it, and I liked at the end how you introduce, you're introduced to Pongo and Perdita, mm-hmm. um, you know, being As given puppies. to each of their respective owners. And so... And um, and you got to figure. Okay, so Cruella knows Anita, and uh, what's his nose? Um, I forget. Pongo's dad, right? Owner. Yeah. Pet. Um, Jonathan, I think. I don't know. So yeah. they uh, so they all know each other and they're friendly. And in One Hundred One Dalmatians, that is not the case. So well, they're not friends. The only ones that are friendly are Anita, darling, and Cruella. Mm-hmm. Those are the only two that are friendly because. Jonathan is not friendly. She, she, Cruella got his ass fri- fired in the oh, movie. Right, right. If you remember it, and he remember at the end of the movie, he's writing that song, Cruella de Vil, yeah. Cruella de Vil. <laughs> so, so he 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 already doesn't hate her. So that that's what I liked about it. That was a nice little touch. You see Pongo dancing around all over the mm-hmm. as he's you know um, playing the piano. So they're going to have a sequel to this movie. They've already announced and confirmed. So there's going to be a second one. So I would hope I that this gonna... bridges that to, into 101 to Dalmatians. 101 Dalmatians. Yeah, yeah I, I hope so, too. I think that if they continue with a third one as the actual 101 Dalmatians or even this next one, I'm, I'm so down. I'm my down my bar it. was set so low going into this movie. I was surprised. Mm-hmm. I was so shocked at how good this movie was. I thought, yeah, it was, I thought it was going to suck. I, I thought it was going to tailor to, you know, the female audience. But no, that's not the case. Like, a, any guy would enjoy the shit out of this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it was done really well. I mm-hmm. liked it. They had a nice cast. Um, they cast it really well, especially uh, Stingray as uh, <laughs> as Horace. <laughs> <laughs> that's Just all I can see Stingray. him now as, man. Stingray from Cobra Kai. Yeah. <laughs> Stingray. <laughs> But yeah, man, if you guys haven't watched Cruella, definitely watch it. It's on Disney Plus now, I think, mm-hmm. um, for free. Mm-hmm. Now you can watch it for free without having to pay for it. Oh, really? Okay. So yeah, yeah. Foos. Yeah. yeah. So Sick. keep your minds open mm-hmm. for definitely. movies. Right. All right. Well, well, not your movies, Steph. Your movies always suck. <laughs> How <laughs> dare you? Well, is that going to do it for Geeking Out today? Yeah, Foo, I think we've geeked out enough. All right. Everybody stick around for the joint report. No! Are you on weed? Give me some, I'll smoke you two under the table. The Joint Report is brought to us by Alpaca Smoke Lounge. Come on in, Alpaca Bowl. (laughs) Yes, please. All right, man. So uh, on today, let me pull up these uh, articles that I found on High Time Magazine. 
Now I'll start with this one. Um, hang on, let me let me just get it pulled up. I should have been prepared, but you know, here we are. Okay, so uh, the pandemic really has uh, as as successful as the cannabis industry was during the pandemic because uh, cannabis was considered an essential necessity for a lot. Considering everybody was pretty much home, what the hell else were they going to do except for maybe just scour the internet and just get pissed off at each other because you're either right or left leaning. Uh, people, no matter where you stand on either side of the aisle, you are smoking weed. At least, by and large, people. That's one thing we all have in common, man. If if you know, if you if you've had experience smoking weed, uh, you enjoy the shit out of it, <clears throat> and it's rare that you say, "Nope, this isn't for me." Uh, but because the pandemic, it, the economy as a as a whole really took a hit, and uh, because we saw a lot of growth in the industry. California really wants to uh, stimulate that particular industry. So California is to infuse desperately needed money into that industry. A $100 million package aims to aid marijuana businesses in this state. Uh, in an aim to prop up the state's still struggling legal cannabis industry, lawmakers in California on this last Monday approved new funding to marijuana businesses in order to stay ahead of the black and gray markets. The $100 million package was proposed by Governor, your boy, Gavin Newsom, Josh, to be provided <laughs> as grants to cities and counties to help cannabis businesses transition from provisional to regular licenses, according to the LA Times. Uh, LA, Los Angeles will be the biggest beneficiary of this money, the newspaper reported, which noted that the state's largest city will receive $22 million. The grant money would help cities hire experts and staff to assist businesses in completing the environmental studies and transitioning the licenses, according to the LA Times. Now, back in 2016, California voters approved Prop 64, which legalized a recreational pot use for uh, anybody over the age of 21 or older. Uh, but five years later, the regulated cannabis market still lags well behind the illicit market when marijuana is untaxed and often cheaper. And, you know, we've we've been uh, customers of these kinds of establishments where, you know, it, the price is what it is on the board and you don't have to worry about paying taxes. Most claim that the taxes were included, but when you actually go to a legitimate service like Grass Store, and by the way, if you go to foodbarshow.com and click on the banner at the very bottom and get 30% off, if you're a first time user, you will find that that 30% really takes care of the taxes that are being charged, which is pretty much 30%. So um, the budget that uh, that the budget included 153.8 million cannabis control fund to reflect the consolidation of the functions and positions of the Bureau of Cannabis Control, the Department of Food and Agriculture, and the Department of Public Health into a new standalone Department of Cannabis Control within the business. So it's getting its own office to, to regulate yeah. the cannabis, which is important because I, you know, and the food really brought this up a lot and I thought he was full of shit because at the time he really kind of was. Um, he, 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 had a, he had a bone to pick with the FDA, <laughs> if you guys remember. Uh, but, I mean, they were the only source available to help regulate this new and growing industry. And now, uh, because we found out that the FDA is so out of touch and has a bunch of dinosaurs running it, it wasn't as efficient as we would have hoped it to be, especially considering it's a federal entity and federally it's still a, a Schedule One drug. So... Um, this is all going to start next month. This proposal seeks to further the goals of legalization and regulation by creating a single point of contact for cannabis licensees, local governments, and other stakeholders as well. With a focus on making licenses and compliance more straightforward, transparent, and efficient, this proposal aims to simplify participation in the legal market and support the successful and safe operation of a cannabis business in compliance with state law. And um, the budget said that centralizing the licensing programs uh, enforcement efforts will result in more effective enforcement that better protects public health, safety and lands and makes it more costly and inefficient to participate in the illicit cannabis industry. So if you participate in the black market, it's going to become kind of a bad time because you're not 
you're, you're actually kind of a lie as much as a consumer as I enjoy that because you're it's kind of that, that middle ground you're getting the quality product for without having to pay the taxes you are mm-hmm. still exposed to the black market effects if you get an illegitimate source like for example you remember the uh, the issue that we were having a year and a half to two years ago with the cartridges where people were yeah. having pretty much pneumonia because they were smoking a chemical that they weren't supposed to be inhaling Mm-hmm. Uh, you were getting them at places like this that operated without having to pay taxes because uh, we were going to one that operated like a church <laughs> because you know if yeah. you if you set yourself up like a church you wouldn't have to pay those taxes but you're exposing yourself up to uh, consuming these kinds of products so furthermore the 100 million dollar grant money that was approved by California lawmakers on Monday would go to local agencies with the most provisional licenses for growing, manufacturing, distribution, testing and retail operations. Uh, they can be used by cities offering equity funding to cannabis businesses owned by people of color. And I think that's probably the most important thing because um, we have we have reported on this podcast before where although a lot of um, a lot of the businesses are you know that are that are that are uh, in the cannabis industry uh they're being opened up and approved more for white people uh even though there are more black people applying for these licenses and permissions so uh this grants will really help those businesses get the equity that they deserve and we might see a lot more growth in that because um not to say that why people aren't passionate about this industry but you have just as much passion on uh, d- despite your your skin color and so i'm i'm glad that this is uh developing that equity no matter who you are and trying to get into this mm-hmm. business so i mean what do you think man i think this is a is a good thing for california i think this is going to give us that's that that next step to be as close to the quality that we experienced when we took the trip to denver what do you think? And you know what? It's, it's much needed, man. I, I'm all for it. I'm 100% on board with this um, because we need that type of quality. We need that type of freedom, man. And and with this type of investment that they're willing to put into it, it's it's much needed and a little, a little late, but I'll take it, man. I'll take it. Because, yeah. yeah, you know, having dealt with the black market, quote unquote, um, of this cannabis industry, you know, for years we were, we were doing this, like... There were times when we got weed that just was like moldy. There were times when it's like the we've had a few cartridges that just leak or just don't even work. Remember how many times how many cartridges did I get that used to burn out? Yeah, I think at our house at the house at one point, I would have like five cartridges just spread out throughout the house. And then and we, we would just, just like, use the oil to we would just dab it at the end. We just dab. It. Yeah, I think at one point me and the foo got like. Oh, like really uh, MacGyverish about it, and started melting the oil into newer cartridges to use yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. it was. I mean, a, it, I, it just reminded me of. Remember when you uh, when they have a uh, disposable or no no uh, refillable uh, ink cartridges for your printers, and how shitty yeah, those that's, were. <laughs> that's, that's what it reminded me of. Like, that's all. It, that's all it was, man. Refi- yeah. Refillable weed cartridges. <laughs> At least to us, it was that. That and the syringes. Those syringes that had that you that you're supposed to use to, to put on on the on the on the you nail know, to dab. S- sometimes those worked really well, but a hundred like maybe seventy five percent of the time, you pretty much just took an entire gram dab. Yeah, it was so runny. That was hell. It was like oh, it was a cut. So it had to been cut with something like maybe even water because it was just so runny. Yeah. And it was a poor yeah, design. It was yeah. It was just a poor design. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they did not think that went through. Um, the consistency was off, too. Because sometimes, remember, we used to get somewhere you just couldn't push any out, that it was just so thick. Yeah, it was so viscous. And then other times, yeah. yeah. And then all of a sudden, the next one we get, just the whole thing shoots out. What's well, like, what the fuck? Yeah, it was inconsistent. I didn't enjoy it. Yeah. Who, who made that product again? Do you remember? Um, I forget. No, I don't. Some no the name. Foo, the Foo remembers because the Foo holds grudges like no one else against fucking weed products. So <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he'll. Yeah, he sets he'll have, up vendettas exactly. out of nowhere. <laughs> heavy hitters. Oh, heavy hitters. No, uh, you sure? The heavy hitters were actually so. were the quality ones. It was the the off brand ones. No, well the heavy hitter um, syringes. 
I you sure it was heavy? I don't, I don't think it was. We'll have to, conf- we'll have to confirm. We'll have to ask the foo. Because, uh, yeah, you know, there's, know, there's one thing that he food. didn't think, and it was this. <laughs> it's just fresh as fuck. It was not foo. It was not. <laughs> um, so where can I find a job in this uh, cannabis all. industry? Uh, I don't know. We should all be working for that. Yeah. Well, I got my stock. Oh, okay. So <laughs> this this should help it grow. Anyway, I got one more article, guys, and this one uh, should <laughs> this this should lighten up the mood if it isn't already lightened up. But uh, another article that I found on High Times Magazine, High Times Greats. This is one of their their greatest hits, Steve O's Swedish Adventure, hmm. uh, and this is about when Steve O swallowed a condom full of weed in Scandinavia. Uh, this is uh, let's see, it was recently published, but from December of 2003, an, an issue of High Times. There's uh, there's this article that was uh, that was just brought back up to light and it made it, it made me laugh. So the jackass prankster Stevo thought that he had a brilliant idea. He'd swallow a condom filled with pot in Norway and smuggle it into Sweden. Uh, he says uh, it was my international drug smuggling skit, says Stevo. But when he arrived in Sweden at the end of May of that year, the authorities didn't think the prank was too funny. When I got to Sweden, it took several days for me to crap it out. He explains. The entire time we had interview after interview, pretty much every interview I did, I told them I swallowed a condom full of pot. The police wound up seeing one of the articles uh, the morning I crapped it out and I got ambushed by Swedish plainclothes officers as I walked out of the hotel. The stunt uh, started in the airport in Oslo, Norway. This was an idea I was uh, was really excited about, Steve-O explains. Take a condom, stuff it with marijuana, tie a knot and swallow it so when i crapped it out i could roll up a joint and say now that's good shit <laughs> <laughs> i was really drunk at the time i did it he says it took me three tries to get the damn thing stuck in my throat i started freaking out it was kind of a scary episode uh and then he gets thrown in jail now he says uh, not as scary as getting thrown into a swedish jail in solidarity in solitary confinement no less um they, they found out finding a pill of ecstasy and some twigs in my hotel room. Uh, they were convinced I still had it in me. They took me to a hospital and put on an x-ray machine. The x-ray revealed a foreign object in my body. They saw this and saw it as good reason to lock me up for five days. Damn. Dang. Yes, in, in solitary confinement. Um, so he was charged with possession of five grams of marijuana and ecstasy and released from jail. The sweetest document I signed says narcotica smuggling. It was all going to be in my volume three video. He says we got everything on the video, the digging out of the crap, the Mm. entire arrest, my out of jail wrap up. It's a signature piece. He describes (laughs) Now, in addition to his don't try this at home DVDs. Steve-O has been working on a new MTV series, The Nature Show. It's my belief. That nature programming has been hurting for a sense of humor for some time now, he says. Our first promo would show a baboon jerking off and then pan over to us jerking off. Imitation is the highest form of flattery, you know? (laughs) So that's what he's working on these days, aside from the new Jackass movie, which has brought up his own share of controversies with Bam Margera kind of separating himself from the fold. If you haven't heard, you should look that up because uh, if you're a fan of Jackass, if if there's no bam, it's kind of not jackass anymore. It's not, yeah. But I, I mean, dude, the guy's gone through so much shit. He does not need to be a part of this right now. <laughs> like, yeah, it's not it's not helping just him. Gonna exacerbate it. Yeah. yeah, I think this is the last one, right? Their last jackass. That yeah, the, the the rest of the guys are like, they're they're probably thinking if there's no bam, there's no show. So. Yeah, and I mean, dude, they're all like in their fifties or about to be in their fifties. They've broken their share of bones and fucked up their bodies Maybe. enough. I, I yeah, know. I think Johnny Knoxville even said he's like, dude, I don't want to be doing this for the rest of my life. This is it. Like, yeah, just to, just get this over with. <laughs> one last one. <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, so, I, can you imagine? Can you imagine like filling up a condom with weed, trying to swallow it, getting it stuck in your throat? And then actually going through five days of waiting for it to come out of your uh, the other end. How and then going into jail for five days after that. It's just like, dude, that just sounds like the worst vacation in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Mm-mm. poor guy. Mm-mm. That needs to be an episode of Locked Up and Abroad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No kidding. <laughs> but uh... have Steve-O reenact it. Like, it's just Steve-O reenacting his own story. <laughs> kind of like in, in private that, parts. It's just the, 
the cast doing, just replaying what actually happened. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Well, well that's going to do it for, uh, for the Joint Report, everybody. Everybody stick around for FUBAR Sports. Smoke weed every day. Blue Bar Sports is brought to us by Deal With It, the best poker sunglasses around. Deal With It. Are they mirrors? I don't, I don't know, man. It's the Deal With It sunglasses, but for poker. Deal with oh, it. All right. I'll take it. All I'll right. take it, food. What do we got? Well, food. Da, 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 Basketball, foo. Yeah. It's NBA playoffs time. And you know what? The Clippers must have heard me last week, man, because I don't know what lit that fire under Pandemic P. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Playoff P. Apologies. Playoffs? Uh, what lit a f- yeah, I know. Uh, somehow, he just decided, hey, man, I'm going to start playing and start actually hoping the Clippers win. Because yeah. the Clippers won, foo. The Clippers beat the Utah Yaz. Who knew? Who freaking knew? Not now, me. now, granted, not they're, me, not, they're not getting past the Suns. I'm calling it right now. That's just not going to happen. Foo, Foo, I think you're doing what I did last week. You're just giving the Clippers more fuel. Don't jinx it. I just don't. Don't jinx it. I mean, Foo, I, I've, uh, you know what? I've, I told the Foo this last night that for the remainder of the playoffs, I am now an NBA East fan. Um, I don't care what team out of the East, but any team out of the East. Really? If uh, they Hawks. have to go up against the, if they have to go up against the Clippers. I'm going to be an East fan. I don't give a fuck. Oh, well, if yeah, from yeah, LA. yeah. But but yeah. currently, and, and yeah, I see where you're going with this, but currently I am, I, I actually gained a lot of respect for the Suns. <sighs> see, and I have respect for them. I, I do respect the Suns, but as a longtime Laker fan, <laughs> having dealt with what I've dealt with with the fucking Phoenix Suns, I will never, ever support them to win an NBA championship. I'm, if it, I get to the, it, it, I'm I mean, not gonna be mad if it happens. Is what I'm saying. Uh, I, I mean, I won't either. But I mean, I'm not gonna like it. And if at least I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna root for a team that's pretty more goddamn entertaining in that. Yeah. Granted, well, if they have, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. I was like, what's happening? Whoa, dude, <laughs> dude, dude. Whoa, dude. Calm down, all right. Wow. Need Donnie, to you're out of your element. Donnie. Whoa. Shut the fuck up, Donnie. <laughs> Foos, I mean, uh, uh, either way, yeah, the Suns, I, the Suns, I feel like are just going to destroy him. Devin Booker right now is a man on a mission. Um, he is just super motivated to continue Kobe Bryant's legacy as just a dog, man. He, he just does not give a fuck right now. He wants to beat everybody that he goes up against. Um, last, the last series against the Nuggets, who you know who they swept 4-0, there was a fan. That posted a video, or like there was a video posting on Instagram where a fan said after on game one, four games, Suns in four, oh, Suns right, in four, right. and the fan immediately got punched in the face by a Denver Nuggets fan, and he retaliated but, hard, and he retaliated hard. He beat but the shit Devin out of Booker, both of them. Yeah, Devin Booker, he saw that after the Suns had beat the the Nuggets in game four, he's like. Yo, I need that guy's contact info. Send me his contact info. <laughs> he reached out to the fan and he gave him series tickets to the to the Suns um, Western Conference Championship games, as well as a bunch of swag like a Devin Booker jersey, um, Suns season tickets. Like this dude got hooked up, dude. For, for taking talk that about punch enabling for calling. <laughs> I for real, it's a little man. Controversial, don't you like think? The fucking Suns. <laughs> the Suns are just a bunch of enablers. I guess. God damn it. Yeah. But I, I it, it was funny. But yeah, man. I, I, the Suns. I don't. I think are just gonna. Especially if the Clippers don't have Kawhi. I don't think that the the Clippers have enough to keep up with the firepower power on the Suns. Mm-hmm. Like those guys, just their bench is so deep. Even when they don't have Chris Paul, they're still a deep deep team so it's going to be a great series i think it will i think the the series will go in seven games it's going to go seven games but i think the suns will go out on top so suns in seven that's my prediction playoffs <laughs> i know uh continuing on the playoffs um as of recording this we do not have a conclusion though we will by the end of this um uh, between the bucks 
Nets and the Hawks and Sixers games. Mm -hmm. Um, They both are going to game sevens. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the Nets have been dealing with some struggles with being without Kyrie, um, especially the last couple of games. Uh, He landed on his ankle pretty nasty, like Mm -hmm. it like really bent sideways. Mm -hmm. And um, they're saying that he may be out. He's out for sure for the rest of this series. Um, But who knows if he'll be back if they make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, And then the Hawks and the Sixers, man. The, the Hawks and Sixers has been a great series because the Sixers have been one of the best teams in all of basketball all season. And the last couple of games, they've just imploded. Uh, game five against the Hawks, they were up 25. 25, mind you, in the third quarter. They somehow blew a 25-point lead and lost the game. They like, were taking notes from point... the 90s Lakers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they like Joel Embiid was like he had 31 points, 10 rebounds or like 14 rebounds, like six or seven assists. But the one player that fucked it up for them was Mr. Ben Simmons. And that's because this guy cannot shoot a free throw to save his life. <laughs> like if it came down, like it's between him and Shaq is one of the worst all time free throw. Shooters yeah. Shaq. Time. I mean, it's just it's amazing. And this guy's not even a center. But uh it's what's funny was I shared it with the Fubar show and the Fubar we'll we'll try to share it on the on the Fubar show IG, mm-hmm. but Philly fans, savage in their ways as always, they started posting up missing p- p- pictures all over Philadelphia, uh, and the picture itself is a picture of Ben Simmons, you know, like screaming, and then it says in the picture, missing person, Ben Simmons. Ident- identifying characteristics can't shoot a free throw last scene game three of round two and armed but not dangerous <laughs> 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 uh, and this is shown all over philadelphia i mean philly philly, <laughs> philly sports fans in general are just unrelenting shit talkers and i'm proud to be calling myself one as an eagles fan yeah, you guys are the worst uh, but, uh, but oh man Oh man, I I don't think the the Sixers will be beating the Hawks. I think the Hawks will make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. Shockingly, um, you know, being a young team, they'll get beat by either the Bucks or the Nets for sure. Or uh, you know, in true Atlanta fa- fashion, they'll just give mm. up the lead. Mm-hmm. That's true. Mm-mm. That's true. As the, hey, as long as it's not a uh, twenty five point lead, I think we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so yeah, man. I mean, basketball. It's in. This is the latest in summer that we're going to be getting basketball. Like basketball has never run this late into the year in in summer, so it's really nice to keep it to have it in the dead of summer. Mm-hmm. Um, on top of baseball, um, you know. And next, going on to baseball, I re- I I announced last week that the MLB was going to be sending out a memo to teams regarding illegal substances, um, pitchers using illegal substances, and you know what? There have been some pretty interesting things that have come out as of late as a result yeah pitchers are particular pitchers were really pissed and not only that some pitchers were being exposed uh, from using these substances so there is one person who was the each of these pitchers every pitchers connect in the mlb and uh these pitchers would hit him up and his name was Bubba Harkins, and he was pretty much the guy the MLB pitchers hit up for the sticky stuff, a.k.a. pine tar, or the stuff that fucks the ball up. So when you hit it, it just slides off. You get a lot more grounders, so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. So he's pretty much speaking out. You could find this article on Sports Illustrated, but here are some texts that he has recently shared from some famous pitchers. So this is from January 2019 from none other than Garrett Cole the New York Yankees pitcher, one of the top ones. He said, I was wondering if you could help me out with this sticky stuff. (laughs) The stuff I had last year uh, seizes up when it gets cold. Can you come up with it, uh, come up with, or do you have a mix that will play better in cold weather? That one is also sexual. Mm. (laughs) Uh, April 2019, Adam Wainwright, one of the most hated Cardinals pitchers I've ever seen play against the Dodgers he hit him up said Bubba this is Adam Wainwright can I give you a call thanks very thick stuff again out of context that text just sounds weird um another one hey Bubba a couple guys asking about some secret stuff 
Anyway, you can send a couple batches with the angels when they come. Oh, come on! And then Dang. we cut... Bro, you're telling me. The angels? They haven't even won. It's just a waste of sticky stuff for them. Mm -hmm. uh, February 2017. Bubba, Max Scherzer. Need two batches, please. And this is from the phone of a staff member on the Nationals. Bubba, Max needs the stuff ASAP. He will pay over for overnight shipping. And then the last text was from May of 2018. Um, Tyler Chatwood, you think we can get some of the your stuff sent over for us? So pretty much this this just goes deeper and deeper. Um, more and more people are coming out, or are, are being exposed by this, but and it is. Josh, how how long do you figure this has been going on in baseball? I mean, you think Since Babe Ruth was had, had a deal with these? Kind of no, things? no, 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 no. Not no. that I long. I think this is a, re I think this is a relatively mm -hmm. new in invention, considering the what was, yeah. I th I think it came along the time that stickum, um, was introduced in football, and that was like in the sixties and seventies. Okay. Like the, for instance, one of the most famous stickum users is none other than a Raider, Mister uh, Fred Belichnikov. Uh, he was uh he was a very very um. He was widely known to use that. So was Lynn Swan. Um, like they, they are all pretty, uh, John Stallworth, they pretty much used it a lot. So I think it coincides around that timeline. It's it's really hard to kind of pinpoint exactly when it started evolving. Um, I mean, because it's been so under the rug and there was really no monitoring it at the time. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to pinpoint that. But now it's, yeah, pretty much MLB is just, they don't give in a fuck. You know, the, the umpires will start checking randomly during the game. And if they fail you're using it, they're kicking your ass out. Like they'll, they'll how do you, you're out, and I think hefty suspensions too. What What are your thoughts? And in, and in, in when you contrast this controversy with the MLB actually approving the juiced up balls, like the the balls are like they're harder than they used to be. So when you make contact with them, it makes for more dingers. Yes. So is is this? Would you? Wouldn't the argument? Can you make the argument that with pitchers doing this, that this kind of evens out? that issue yes and no um yes technically speaking it evens out the issue because we had an em enormous amount of dingers though within the last couple of years because of the juice balls but two because of this this kind of really unevens it makes it a little bit more uneven on the pitcher side because you already you also got to think about how difficult it already is to hit these fucking pitches mm -hmm. with the different movement styles the different speeds that that come up on them it does make it a little bit harder and when you add the extra element of some stuff that even if you get solid contact a solid fucking hit on a ball is going to cause it to either bounce or just not have any impact on it whatsoever yeah it kind of that alone kind of defeats the purpose um so i understand both sides though as a as a purist as for me myself i i love the pitching especially when you actually get down to it the different hand techniques they have to use on the ball the way the ball has to come out uh, of their hand at the right moment and also the delivery delivery also matters too it it's you know it, it kind of makes it cheat it feel a little cheated that they're using something extra because pitchers in the past, like, it's just all pure skill. Like, it's just all arm movement. All I'm technique. curious. I'm curious what, like, Fernando Valenzuela would have to say about all of this. You know what? He probably wouldn't have been so opposed to it because of what his pitching style, like, did to him mm -hmm. as far as on a on a health level. Because he used to throw what was called the screwball. Yeah. And when you throw the screwball, you, you have to turn your wrist mm -hmm. as you throw it. And that impact fucks up. That's what used to fuck up his forearm. So I'm sure if he had the stick him, it probably would have made it easier to slide off and like do it. I don't know. I mean, it's really I'm not a I've never been a pitcher myself, so it's a little harder for me to say how it would how these really do benefit them. But yeah, man, I I don't know. I I, I like it because now it's an even ball field. We don't have these fucking these teams that we all hate. Like if you notice all of those teams, I fucking roll all those players. I round or I railed off right now, or I saw, talked about mm -hmm. were all teams. I hate They're fucking St. Louis Cardinals. <laughs> the yeah. goddamn either Pittsburgh pirates or the New York Yankees, Nike Yankees. Now, um, yeah, Arnold Garrett okay. Cole was on the Astros at that point when he was asking for that shit. I mean, it's, it's just, 
I hated these pitchers going up against them because already alone they were already tough to hit with their high high velocity that they have. But when you add this little extra sticky stuff to it, it's just like, oh, now you're just fucking... Now you're not being fair, man. You're that kid that comes to the fucking ballpark with his own bat and and all that stuff. And it's just... You, you get pissed and I'm taking my ball home. I don't like Repugnant. this. Repugnant! You know? Yeah. Yeah, man. I don't like it. I don't like it, so... Um, but you know what, man? We'll, we'll see. We'll see who else comes out and uh, gets exposed by this. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to finish off this sports segment with a little moment in history. So 30, today marks the day that 34 years ago, two Mets fans, <laughs> New York Mets fans, were unjustly spit on by Mets players. Let's let's have a listen on this uh, upcoming segment. Sure. Let's, let's take a listen. I hate Keith Hernandez. Hate him. I despise him. <laughs> why? I'll tell you why. No, let me tell it. No, you can't tell it. You I'll... always tell it. All right, tell it. I let it tell it. You just tell it. <laughs> June 14th, 1987. Mets, Phillies, were enjoying a beautiful afternoon in the right field stands when a crucial Hernandez error opens the door to a five-run Phillies ninth, cost the Mets the game. Our day was ruined. <laughs> There was a lot of people, you know, they're waiting by the players' parking lot. Now, we're coming down the ramp. <laughs> Newman was in front of me. Hernandez was coming toward us. As he passes us, Newman turns and says, Nice game, pretty boy. <laughs> <laughs> Hernandez continued past us up the ramp. Then, a second later, something happened that changed us in a very deep and profound way from that day forward. It wasn't. He spit on us. <laughs> and I screamed out, I'm it! <laughs> then I turned and the spit ricocheted off him and it hit me. Wow. What a story. Yeah. Unfortunately, the immutable laws of physics contradict the whole premise of your account. <laughs> Allow me to reconstruct this, if I may, for Miss Bennis, as I've heard this story a number of times. <laughs> Newman, Kramer, if you'll indulge me. According to your story, Hernandez passes you and starts walking up the ramp. Mm -hmm. Then you say you were struck on the right temple. The spit then proceeds to ricochet off the temple, striking Newman between the third and the fourth rib. <laughs> The spit then came off the rib, made a right turn, hitting Newman in the right wrist, <laughs> causing him to drop his baseball cap. The spit then splashed off the wrist, pauses in midair, mind you, <laughs> makes a left turn, and lands on Newman's left thigh. That is one magic loogie. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the way it happened. What happened to your head when you got hit? Well, uh, uh, my head went back to the left. <laughs> Say that again. Back and to the left. Back and to the left. Back and to the left. <laughs> so, what are you saying? I'm saying that the spit could not have come from behind. <laughs> that there had to have been a second spitter. <laughs> Behind the bushes on the gravelly road. <laughs> and you claim that would have caused your head to pitch forward. So the spit could have only come from the front and to the right. But that's not what they would have you believe. <laughs> I'm leaving. Jerry's a nut. <laughs> the sad thing is, we may never know the real truth. <laughs> Let me refresh your memory. Anyway. Oh, God. Classic. <laughs> Oh, such a great scene, such such a great episode altogether. Um, for those of you that don't under may not under know or what they're talking about, they're pretty much just recreating the grassy knoll theory of the of JFK getting assassinated, but <laughs> instead with spit <laughs> and baseball players. And Keith Hernandez. Great scene. Keith and Keith Hernandez. <laughs> 
Oh god. And then yeah, Elaine starts to date him. Yeah. <laughs> oh right. And Jerry gets jealous because yeah. Jerry wanted to be his only friend. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> that was great. Good times. Great. Well, Foo, I think that'll end it for sports. All right, everybody stick around for the music highlights. We'll be right back. Music Highlights is brought to us by Is That a Fret? The all-new documentary about the creation of the guitar. Anyway, so, um, all right. So, anyway, we, we got a couple songs here, Fuse. And uh, let's see. The first one up on deck is this new song by Churches and Robert Smith. They partnered up for this new song called How Not to Drown. And, uh, man, if you haven't seen Churches Live, and it's spelled C-H-V-R-C-H-E-S, which is bullshit, but I still enjoy the <laughs> shit out of these guys because I've seen them live a couple of times at Coachella. And... Um, you know, granted, I'm not really into electronic music, but these guys fucking jam. They they write they write some of the best electronic music around, and uh, I really enjoy them. Uh, one of the one of my favorite songs by them is one that they collaborated most recently as a remix with uh, Haley Williams of Paramore, and um, they they do a lot of good collaborations. And this is one of the most latest ones that they've done with Robert Smith of The Cure. You almost don't recognize him in this song, and so uh, and that's. But but when you know that it's Robert Smith, you're like, oh, yeah, that's that's fucking Robert Smith of the cure. So um, let's listen to it. It's called How Not to Drown. Here we go. Now, the rest of it kind of veers off from there. But that that initial riff. That, that initial mm-hmm. guitar intro riff, I mean, it's, it follows the progression of Stairway to Heaven. And, you know, some could say it's a coincidence because, you know, it happens. There's only so many chords on uh, in, in music that uh, but but what really makes it kind of questionable or suspect is that these two bands used to tour together in their early mm. days. So mm-hmm. Jimmy Page probably heard it. And Jimmy Page has been accused of not only stealing this, but other riffs and uh i would argue that maybe he just became very influenced maybe it was a a bug in his ear that he thought was original and then he released it if 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 you're asking me if he stole it he definitely improved it (laughs) but uh, because this sounds like it was written in like a minor chord where stary is like major yeah, well, I, I think it's the same chord progression, using the same chords, uh. but that last note, it goes into a minor, whereas Stairway would, would finish it off into a major right? With the da, 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 at the end of that sequence. So um, what do you think, Josh? You think they stole oh, it? Oh, yeah, dude. Uh, I think, I think they think stole that, it. <laughs> I don't think they stole it, but I definitely think that they that kind of heard that tune. Mm-hmm. And definitely incorporated it in Stairway, cause, st- I mean, dude, it's that that part immediately as soon as you hear that, you automatically my brain automatically just went boom Stairway, yep. like there's a lady who show mm-hmm. all that glitters is gold. It's just like, dude, it just it hits really well, and it's too hard to not say it wasn't stolen. So, right. yeah, that was it's still it's still a good instrumental. Right. Damn, now I gotta listen to Zeppelin after this. Damn you, bastard. <laughs> yeah, I figured that would happen. But uh anywho foos, I think that's gonna do it for the music highlights. <laughs> and foo facts! Foos, it's brought to us by Hold Your Horses. Need a stable built? Well, hold your horses is for you. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, who wants to go first? We got some foo facts here. Steph? I'll go first. Uh, I can... oh. Yeah, go Steph. Lady Spears. Okay. Well, then Josh should go first. Oh! Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'll go. Wow. There, there's a picnic-related holiday in August. Oh. Oh, hang on. Sorry. Mm. <laughs> 
If you prefer to dine outside in the summer, then you'll be thrilled to find out that there's a picnic-related holiday in August thanks to Australia, a tradition that's been around in the Northern Territory since at least the 1800s. It takes place on the first Monday of the month. Mm. Granted, August isn't, oh, isn't summer in Australia, but you can celebrate the holiday wherever you are, if you like. Nice. Yeah. Nice. You want to go next there, Josh? Sure, Foos. All right. So, Foos, did you know that sunsets only exist because the Earth's atmosphere acts as a prism for light? Is that, is that it? See, Foos, so <laughs> it's called scattering, and uh, mo- molecules and particles in the atmosphere, which are more numerous at sunset, scatter short wavelength violet and blue light away from your eyes so we can see the other colors on the spectrum, like yellow and orange. Hmm. All right. All right. Science. Science. All right. Fact. The CIA headquarters has his own Starbucks, but the baristas don't write names on the cups. Its receipts say store number one instead of Starbucks, and its workers need an escort to leave their work posts. Crazy. Hmm. All for a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. All right. The largest scoop of ice cream ever weighed was over 3,000 pounds. (laughs) Oh, bonus fact. Did you know that July is National Ice Cream Month? The biggest scoop ever, which weighed a belly bust in 3,010 pounds, was created by Kemp's Dairy in Cedarburg, Wisconsin, as part of their 100th anniversary. And the scoop stood 5 foot 6 inches high and stretched out two, or 6 feet 2 inches wide and took about 733 containers of ice cream. Jesus. And it Damn. was strawberry. Strawberry. Hmm. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> Back to you, Josh. All right, Foos. Here we go. <clears throat> Did you know that we actually produce enough food to feed everyone on the planet? <laughs> Seafood. The real problem, though, it's distribution. And uh, gluttony in America. But, you know, we'll just uh, glance over that last part. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Well, let's see. We'll, we'll, we'll tie a bow on it with this one here. Fact. Humans aren't the only animals that dream. Studies have indicated that rats dream about getting to food or running through mazes. Most mammals go through REM sleep, the cycle in which dreams occur. So scientists think that there's a good chance that they all dream. So, I mean, dogs have to dream, right? They, I see them kind of kicking when they're, when they're going through the REM stage of their sleep. Yeah, I think I think mm-hmm. it's it's been proven that dogs can that dogs are dreaming. Um, I've seen both of my dogs here dream, just start kicking or start making this weird roughing noise <laughs> in the middle of their. <laughs> <group's> like, <laughs> it's like, what are you chasing? Yeah, what are you going after, dog? Yeah. An elusive yeah. squirrel. In the mailman. It's all it's all a black and white movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Noir movie, Casablanca. <laughs> Yeah, man. Well, that's going to do it for Food Facts today. Kind of cutting it short because I understand that uh, you, you got to go help set up for your party there, Josh. See, so. Foo, I'm already getting shit from the family that I am. Why are you recording a podcast when we should be setting up? So, yeah. What's your party? There, Shouldn't they be setting up? They should be setting up for you. Brew, preaching to the choir. Yeah. Mm. Well. To the choir. Mm-hmm. All right, man. Well, uh, thanks, everybody, for, for, for tuning in for this one. We're, we'll, we'll be back next week. Um, I don't know. The, the food coming back to the show is a little still TBA, but uh, we'll, um, I don't know. We'll, 
we'll corner him today at the party and say, uh, you know, if he's got a timeline. But uh, don't hold your breath, guys. But uh, let's see, what else we got? Uh, we got uh, we said everything at the top of the show, so I think that's enough uh, for today. Thank you all very much for listening to the Foo Bar Show. Thanks for hitting subscribe and remember to rate, review, and tell your friends like a freaking champion. You can always get in touch with us and get our merch at foobarshow.com. That's f double o bar show.com and search f double o bar show on YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram. Check us out, drop us a line, and we'll fill it up like a couple of foos. I've been Josie. Good and Josh. And Seth. Signing off, saying, don't be a dick.